we can grow out of touch, I think, with our bodies because we're in them. And like you said, you know, man, if we're not taking care of our bodies, we're going to end up paying the price at some point. Like you can press hard. We all can press hard for a season and, you know, sacrifice sleep, eat bad stuff, but it's going to catch up if you do that as a lifestyle. I think the recording is going to, by nature, focus on whoever's talking. So we just need to be cognizant that we don't talk in really fast little snippets, but that we talk in more of a conversation and that'll it'll follow us. Gotcha. Okay. So now the camera should be on me. Ooh. <laughs> so let me take it my way to actually introduce you to the people who listen to that this way. And I'll introduce myself this way. It'll be both an introduction and the beginning. Um, because I like your profile. I went on LinkedIn and I love wow. how you introduce yourself, like director of experience. Like I love that title. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it shows so much about what you do in just three words. Um, I've met you through the social media marketing world conference. Am I butchering it? Market, well, yeah. And it was way back, oh, seven years. Oh, Did you figure out what year that was that you came? No, I haven't. <laughs> Let's say seven or plus, but it was it was a it was a while. Well, it was no more than seven because eight years ago we were at the Hyatt. So I don't remember if you came the very first year we were at the convention center. I was at the convention center. Yeah, I was. A, I was at the convention center. So it was, either, it was either six or seven years ago. Okay, well, so it could have been good. seven years ago, but it was our. It could have been our fourth or fifth year because we lost that year of COVID, right? So. Yeah, it's true. So, so it might have been 2016. That sounds about right. I'll follow the flow on that one. I can look it up. I probably have it somewhere in my uh, calendar. But um, I met you through uh, Lisa and uh, she told me you should go check out that conference. She's a marketing conference. And at the time I was trying to launch uh, the posture guide to help people with posture when they have pain. It was 2016. I just looked you up. That was the there very you first go. Time. 2016. So that was seven years ago. Yep. Nice. We nailed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, I loved how you guys organized the conference. I didn't get a chance to see everything, but um, you had me to work on the people over there, and um, I got a talk that year in the people to the people as well to give them some pointers on what they can do because it's a difficult event for people who uh, help. They're super excited to be there, and they they try to be everywhere. <laughs> so they walk a lot. What? How many steps did you do last time? Oh boy, I don't know last time, but I usually average fifteen to twenty thousand steps. Um, sometimes <laughs> more per day. You know, so over three days, it's easily fifty, sixty thousand steps. And if, in my normal life, I'm probably walking three to five thousand steps a day, um, unless I am really intentional about doing more. Yes, that's a intense event, uh, physically and mentally. Right. A lot of um a thing going on but what i've noticed when i was over there is that you really are present with everyone connect with everyone and i was really lucky to get introduced to you and to see a bit the behind the scene of the marketing world which is for me still uh, a, a mystery and kind of magical <laughs> So we were just, I was trying to catch up with you um, last week to talk about when I want to talk to someone online, how can I think about it? And you were telling me about how your body was feeling. So um, I kind of would like to go on that two part again, actually, because that was very helpful for me for the marketing side. So people who follow uh, might benefit from it, but also that was very interesting how you've progressed and how relationship progressed over the years and how you got better and struggled and got better and then um, had several wake up call with health and you've been more and more serious about taking care of yourself. And I know in the marketing world, it's not obvious that people will actually be healthy. <laughs> so they will work really, really hard. Mm and not take care of themselves so i i want uh, people who are listening to that to remember even if you work really hard it's okay you can take care of your health uh you better it's it's good so that's kind of like the short intro of who you are and i we were just talking about yeah the, the news that you you need to lose some weight which is everyone's not so favorite news right. from the doctor right so um 
And it's interesting because you also mentioned just after how UPT worked on you uh, and it was still very tender and you got to move, but moving hurts and you get to lose weight. And to do that, you need to move. So it feels almost like the tail of the dog, you know, like the dog's trying to bite its tail. Yeah. A catch 22, as they say, right? Pretty much. I have a, a way to kind of look at it, but I'd be curious if you could uh, tell me how you feel about that because you just learned about it, right? And you feel pretty, it sounds discouraged. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. And listening to you talk and realizing there's a parallel in how we look at our body and how we maybe look at our customers and we talk to them. I think we can grow complacent. I, I know this for myself. So I'm just going to talk about myself. I can grow complacent about my body and think, well, I'm doing okay. I'm getting along. You know, I feel okay. I can eat what I want. And then all of a sudden you get this wake up call of, well, actually, no, the stuff that you've been doing isn't working. Unrelated to my weight, I also got a, a message because I just had blood work done last week that my omegas are off. And I'm ritualistic about taking omegas because I know it's important for my mental health because I've, I've experienced that firsthand when I wasn't taking care of my mental health. And uh, fish oil was like one of the major things that I changed that has made a big difference. I'm like, well, I'm I'm taking exactly what you told me to take. I feel like I'm almost taking too much. And they're like, no, you actually need to take more. So we can grow out of touch, I think, with our bodies because we're in them. And like you said, you know, man, if we're not taking care of our bodies, we're going to end up paying the price at some point. Like you can press hard. We all can press hard for a season and, you know, sacrifice sleep, eat bad stuff, but it's going to catch up if you do that as a lifestyle. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm paying the price right now that the lifestyle that I'm living, I can't keep living it. You know, this is, I know the doctor, what the doctor is going to tell me next week. I already can predict it. And I'm bracing myself, but not in a bad way of, okay, this is serious. I've got to make some changes. My problem is I can do that for a season, but not keep it for a lifestyle. And I think, you know, just to the point about marketing, I think we can grow, we can become aware who we're talking to in our marketing for a season, but we can lose sight of the fact that that customer's changed. You know, you might know who that customer is today, Philippe, but a year from now, perhaps what you're talking about is resonating with someone a little bit different or a lot of bit different. We can call that a word. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we've got to be constantly staying in touch with who are we talking to, just like we've got to stay in touch with our body. And I love that you're making that parallel because I think, you know, overall health is more complicated than just weight or pain or appeal, or it's also relationship. It's also bonds. It's also uh, family members. It's, it's also the connection we have with ourselves. Yep. And we have a tendency to get scared about one point and then go on that one and forget about the other one because it's difficult to remember it's all of us. It's all of this. We are um, a nod in a network of complexity. So I, I like that you look at it also from a standpoint of marketing because it's a good, uh, it's a good image, right? It's a good metaphor. It's visible. Oh yeah. When you market to a person, uh, if you market to another, uh, service in the same field in a year from now it might not be the same person or the person you've helped maybe feels better or something else is off and then you need to kind of assess like well how can i still connect with you and you can get complacent in that marketing saying like well i knew that i don't need to work hard at it anymore or you can make it like you said a lifestyle um at reconnecting with people like you make a lifestyle change as your health like how can i do that on a consistent basis like on being consistent with it because consistency wins the race like it's and it's difficult to be consistent and that's something i want you to think about when you do something you don't like so you need to be consistent <laughs> but it needs to be kind of fun if not you're gonna be like yeah, I'm going to do it like for three months. Yeah, no, it's like taking, you know, eating spinach or some vegetable you don't like, you know, after some period of time, you're going to stop doing it because you don't like it until you find a way to make it enjoyable. Same with staying in touch with your customers. And you said something interesting about your customer because 
you might change in three months. So your message might change, right? And the customer could have stayed the same. So now you're missing them. Mm-hmm. Or you might have stayed the same and you're consistent, but your customer has changed. And so you're missing them. And then so there's like those two things can be going on. But then as one or both of you change, your message now all of a sudden becomes important to somebody else that you didn't even think about talking to. So, you know, there's all these different things. And then our body, like, you know, for me, you know, one thing that's different between last year and this year, when I had the same test done that measures body composition is there's a different kind of stress I'm experiencing, both in terms of pain, physical pain, but then there's also some other dynamics in life that are going on that are different, that weren't there a year ago. And so looking at what does it take to manage all that is a different is a different task today than it was in April or let's just call it February of last year. So we can compare apples to apples. So I think being aware of what has changed is an important thing, right? Absolutely. Like if I go back to that idea of complexity, if you concentrate your attention on one point, you're going to forget the other. So how can you tackle that complexity? And uh, I like the idea, and it's the same in a lot of teaching, the idea of conceptualization. When you conceptualize something, you try to make something complex a little bit more manageable. There's a, a, a framework in the field of chronic pain that I really like. It's not the end all, but it's very, it try to simplify a little bit that complexity and goes with the idea that if you have pain, it might be bio, psycho or social. It's Dr. Engel was a psychiatrist in the 1980s who came up with that concept. So bio, biologic, biomechanic, biologic for you would be the weight, biomechanic would be the pain. Psychologic, well, if I take an example for me, uh, I get I get uh, I have a hard time expressing my emotion so I'm doing a lot of work on that with a therapist how can I express my emotion because if I don't do it it's not good uh, it, but if I do it I'm overwhelmed so I need to learn a new skill in a sense and that's psychologic in the field of chronic pain it could be also a mindset no pain no gain so people go hard and then they hurt themselves too hard <laughs> Um, so you need to tell them well let's take that as a mindset so it's part of your psyche the part how you think can we change a little bit that aspect? And a, a third aspect is social. Well, you have a loved one who's hurt, who's sick, or you have a, an, an emotional connection that's very strong and nurtures you because it goes both ways, right? It could be a positive thing or it could be a, a difficult thing. When you have all of that, you're, uh, you're making the complex a bit more simple. Okay. So what am, what are my stressors? I'm stressing with this I'm stressing with that what are the strategies and it, you might not get everything but it's very much like in marketing like you can't do it all <laughs> so concentrate on a few things and do it right and then add to the list and try to broaden a bit your, your spectrum yeah it's um one of my prof- <clears throat> professors in grad school had this concept that he called the red dot. And if you've ever been to a shopping mall and you look at a map in the shopping mall and there's this red dot, usually red, that says you are here. Mm. And most of us have a difficult time identifying where are we? You know, Mm. where are we right now? What's going on? I love those three different systems that you just said, because that makes it easy to say, okay, where's my body at right now? Where am I at in my emotional, social relationships at the moment? Um, you know, and then where am I at? What was the third thing that you said? <laughs> uh, uh, you said it's social. So it's bio psychosocial. There's yeah, more psychosocial. And I think you could add spiritual into that mix too. You know, yeah, there there's more that sense. And then what you do, and this is my experience is which one of those is the hottest. Yeah. Which one of those things is burning right now. And so that's the one that you need to pay the most attention to. You're aware of all of them, but you say, okay, this is the, the issue that I've got to pay the most attention to because it's burning right now. You know, like I just put my hand on the stove or, you know, I've got to take my son to the hospital because he just broke his arm. Um, mm-hmm. That's that's paramount. Everything else kind of becomes less important for a moment. Then yeah. you can come back to okay. Well, that now that we've solved that problem, now what's next that we need to be focused on? And I'm not sure how that relates to your customers, except to say they've got that going on too. So, Actually, yeah, they you know, so too. being aware of okay, you know, I'm going to use our example. We're marketing to a female, a woman marketer who's between 30 and 50, probably 35 to 50 years old. She works for somebody else's business. That business is going through cycles. That business is 
dealing with the economy that we're all dealing with right now. Inflation is probably driving her. She probably is still being expected to produce results. I literally was just talking to a friend who was dealing with this kind of scenario where the owner of the business was expecting more results from her, but not giving her any more resources, was unclear on the expectations that they want. Now, all of a sudden, they're they're being clear and they're wanting the results yesterday and they weren't clear before. That's a lot of stress. I mean, you're, maybe you've got a solution that can help her. Well, how do you help her with that problem that she's having? You know, yeah, that's a good that's question. A problem that she's like, having. Yeah, sounds like a lot of stress. It absolutely. Is. Um, and it's not uncommon that that stress, in a way or another, increases the pain sensitivity. Like mm-hmm. your nervous system is just like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's right. too much, right? Let's take a time out. For that, I have a tendency to bring it back to the basic. Um, basic as, um, I like the example you gave with the, the kid who's breaking his arm, like it's urgent to go find a doctor and see what's going on. You know, um, sometimes it could be life or death. So you, you go with that urgency in the back of your head. And that's kind of like how I organize in, uh, in the back of my head. I have a very basic idea. It's like, okay, first breathing, second hydration, third sleep. If you don't have those one, let's not even go further. Breathing is a very like day-to-day thing. Like we do that all the time. Moment to moment. Most right? of us <laughs> come again. Moment to moment. If you don't breathe moment by moment, you're not going to be alive in three minutes. And it's the, how it's ordered, right? If you don't have it, as soon you die. Well, breathing or staying hydrated well breathing (laughs) you can stay dehydrated for a longer time so i will say for someone like that i will say well there's two things going on at least at least two things one is the stress and two is how you sort out that stress there's a concept in psychology called msk msk stands for meta strategic knowledge it's basically how you learn to do something when you learn to drive a car you you got to learn how what what is the red thing that says stop on it what do i do when i see it? do i accelerate or do i stop and you have someone who tells you well you need to stop when you see that and uh you need to wait look to the right look to the left and then you move forward that is the strategy That's why you go see someone who teaches you. And so that's the concept of uh, the know-how to. And on the other side, you have basic physiological functions. Hey, you stress. Are you breathing very shallow right now? Like, (gasps) yeah, yeah, I'm really stressed. Well, okay. I cannot really teach you how to sort out that problem right away with your boss or with that person you're working with, but how about we actually work on just that primal function of de-stressing the nervous system and getting into, instead of fight or flight, getting into a recovery phase, even if it's for a three deep breath or an afternoon, how many hours or minutes do you have for that? So the person can actually be a bit less overwhelmed and from there look towards strategies to implement but i've seen that a lot and i'm guilty of it like i've worked with marketers and what i want is result and i don't know how to get it so i ask them to do a million things and it makes no sense to them They're like okay but i'm gonna do it because you're paying me and then we stuck in a rut right it's like and two weeks later it's like okay did we have results uh well we have result according to what you asked me but was it really what you wanted? Um, no, no, that wasn't that wasn't it. And I'm getting confused and confused and confused. So that clarity in marketing or in health is the same. It's like, okay, what's the basic thing here? And I could answer that in health. I'm not going to be able necessarily to answer it in marketing. I will say it's relationship. I will say it's pretty, at least it should be in the ballpark. Like we're human to human um, and maybe quality or something. Like, but I, I'm going to let you answer that part. But in health for her, it's like, hey, take a moment, take a breather, go outside, take a deep breath, take a moment to just pause everything you do, even if it's for one minute and just try to like take care of that breathing. And that's how I handle things with uh, people I'm working with. That's how I handle it with you. Like you told me, well, you have to lose weight, but you have to move, you have to exercise. It's like, how do you wrap it up? And we talked about that last week. I said like, well, progressively, gently, before exercise comes movement. That's what we were talking about last time. I don't know how it goes in marketing, but in health, it's like, all right, let's try to simplify that so that we can start something solid and easy. Well, I think in marketing, 
it can begin this big concept that sounds really complex, but it is at the end of the day relationships. You're trying to understand who your customers are and, you know, what things about them do you need to know? Just like with your body, you know, there's a thousand measurements you could do, right? There's probably... There's probably more than that, but I bet there's a thousand tests that you could do on the body. Which one of those tests do we really need to pay attention to? I was showing you the results of that that body composition. You were focusing in on a couple of things that you saw. For me, it's just a bunch of numbers. And you know, I could get really scared by one of them, but you might say, Well, that you don't need to be scared about that. And I think with your customer, it's like, well, what questions do you really need to pay attention to how your customer answers and how do you get to know who the people are who are really for you? You know, you might have someone that loves you and loves what you've done, but he or she acts way more like your mother who's going to always be your fan and they're going to buy from you no matter what. Well, that might not be your ideal customer, but find someone who is, who's made a choice, who is like really committed to you, but has options and might leave you if you change your product and get to know well, what is it that they really need. And that's, that's at the end of the day, that's the question you're asking of a customer is what do you need? And I think I just heard you say, you're asking that of your body. You need air, <laughs> you need water, <laughs> you need sleep, you need movement. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's number four, but I, I think it's a pretty close number four. Um, and so your customer is going to be able to answer that too, if you ask it that question in the right way. And you may not be able to say, what do you need? Because they may be like, I have no idea. And I, you know, we can't be Steve Jobs and just say, well, I know what you need. Sometimes that might be true. Sometimes you might know better than your customer what they need. And I think in your case, you do. You could probably tell me what I need better than I can. Like you showed me some Tai Chi moves that I tried them. I showed to my PT and he's like, oh, those are awesome. Just don't try to do it that fast. Um, but those are great. You know, I'd love to see you do that. And like, okay, well, I, that's something I can do between meetings right here in my office. That's brilliant. So you knew something that I didn't even know existed. And that's where, you know, a great business person can anticipate what a customer needs. But in terms of like, what is marketing? It is getting to know who your customers are and what they need. And then how can you solve that problem? It's not the other way around. And I think this is where people get turned off to marketers is when we think we've got the solution for everybody and we're just trying to force it down their throat. But if you take the time to build a relationship and get to know what they really need, when it comes time to offer what you have, they're going to be ready. They're going to say, how do I pay you? Yeah, I got the... Very lucky to to talk with marketers that had that broad picture and were listening mm. skills and like you one of them you listen you pay attention. Um, Dennis is another one who listens and both of you are sharp, uh, but not overwhelming. You don't like tell me like oh this is we know everything, just knock it off and do what we, you're not like that. And uh, in the health field, you have the same distinction. You have some people in the health field that will tell you, like, I'm the boss. You're going to do what I'm telling you to do. And you have some people who say, like, well, let's discuss. Let's have a negotiation. Let's let's figure it out. Like, what do you feel you can do? How much time can you allocate? And if I give you five options, are there is one okay? Or do you have something else in mind? Like, the more open conversation the better in the health field like i give you an example i was working with someone her pt told her she needed to uh what was it she needed to go swim again and ask and she was like okay so i'm gonna i got my bathing suit and he told me to do that twice a week and i asked her do you like swimming and say i hate it And what do you like doing? Well, I really like hiking. I, I that re- that's really what I like to do. And it's like, is you PT against hiking or walking? Say no. So, like, what would you rather? You know, well, I'd, I'd rather do the walking. And consistency would be the key. So, if you get that little extra time to listen to ask that extra question, you can really get people in a different space. Um, and now that person is actually back on track and doing really good. Mm. And she was struggling with the whole idea of swimming. She's like, I don't like it. 
Mm. <laughs> and I could see it's the same. Um, it's the same field. Like uh, there, there are some in all field. I think at some point when you go higher, there are some commonality. There, there is some some point. We're all human. So at, for now, so at that point, there's a lot of things. You know that. Yeah, marketing is very much like I'm connecting with you. I need to know who you are. Can I help you? And uh, is the help I'm giving you the best around? And if not, how can I make it better? It's really that bonding time, right? You need to really spend the time. In health, it's the same. Like I say, yeah, you could you could uh, work on your uh, weight and you could exercise more, but will I help you with pain? Is weight, uh, movement, or weight, exercise, or pain your number one priority? Mm -hmm. When I phrase it like that, you can probably answer right away. Yeah. I mean, I... Priority wise, if I was in intense pain, which sometimes I am, that becomes number one. But overall, health is my goal. That's what's most important to me. And I know losing weight will help me be more healthy. Reducing pain will help me be more healthy. Yes. And after you kind of have that conversation with yourself on a day to day basis, like, okay, what, what is the category I can invest some time into today? What am I feeling up to? Like, there's something super interesting with uh, weight and sleep. Uh, if you have poor sleep, your hormonal system doesn't work as well and you can gain weight. I'm not going to go into the detail because I'm not specializing in that field, but uh, that's uh, the people who specialize in a sleeping field are coming in a pain field and say like, hey, if you don't sleep well, you're more in pain. Anybody sleeps less here? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So sleep is coming. It's a big deal. Now, so there you just made a, a transition from knowing an individual customer to knowing a group of customers and that's marketing because marketing is really trying to say, okay, I know you, Philippe, you're my ideal customer. Let's just say I've gotten to know you and I've gotten to know five people like you. And I've built by getting to know you kind of a common picture and marketers call it an avatar of who it is that we're trying to serve. And so now all of a sudden though, I know the kinds of language to use to find more people like Philippe. Yeah, mm. because I know you're asking these questions. I think other people who are asking those same questions are the people that I have something to offer. And so that's really what marketing becomes is knowing how to talk to people in a way that gets them to pay attention to who you are and what you have to offer them and start a relationship. You know, and so, you know, it's just like if you go to a party, you have a line that you might ask at a party. That's going to be a way to get people into conversation and some people are going to respond and others won't. And that's how you figure out who, who you can be friends with and who you're not going to be friends with, right? And that's kind of what we're doing out in the world on the internet or through email or through billboards or whatever marketing form we're using is trying to get people to pay attention and say, hmm, this might be someone I want to talk to that might have something to offer. I want to, you know, I want to find out more. So you're trying to be intriguing or you know, you've identified, oh, well, pain's your thing. You know, are you constantly in pain or, you know, are you having a hard time sleeping? Then I might be able to help you. I found, you know, this interesting statistic, those who, you know, only sleep five hours a night um, are more likely to put on weight next year. Oh, well, hmm. <laughs> that, you know, maybe I should pay attention to that. Yeah. The average, I think for uh, adult is seven to eight hours now that everyone is a bit different and some people need less some people need more but the average is give or take seven to eight as you tend to age you tend to need a bit less sleeping time when you're a kid 10 11 hours is not a bad time actually uh, you need all that you're growing bones you're growing brain you're growing muscle you're growing a lot of things so um, you you need that recovery time. There was a big trend in uh, not so long ago. I haven't seen it lately where it's like, okay, wake up every day at four o'clock in the morning, start your day by working out for an hour, and then you do this and then you do that. And it makes for very incredible productivity. And I think you can do that temporarily, especially if you like it. But it's I don't think a lot of people can sustain that level of intensity health-wise. But it's very interesting because we did talk about the concept of the avatar uh, in marketing. And I was imagining like, okay, I need to talk to Phil. <laughs> when I talked to my, in my video, like, what would I say to, to Phil? And that was very, very helpful because um, as I work with people uh, online or in person, I know them, I see them. It's one person. But when I try to share that, 
uh, that information with a, gr a bigger group, all I see is a screen like with uh, right. Meta on it or LinkedIn or whatever. And it's very difficult. You don't know who you talk to very much. That said, you can you can see the same parallel when you talk with someone in about pain. Mm -hmm. uh, to some extent, you don't know what's their trigger in a sense, what's their stressors. You do not do an avatar like in marketing, but you do need a frame of reference. And for for the marketing, like you said, I can imagine I can take your picture, put it in front of my camera and pretend I'm talking to you when I talk to my camera to have my avatar. But when I work on people that I see in person, it's like a blank canvas and I need to fill up the blank. So my my avatar becomes a frame of reference. What in that frame of reference is the problem? Is it the weight? Is it uh, like that that simplification I just gave you, like biopsychosocial, the, the concept? And if it's biologic, if is it sleep? Is it stress? Is it um, is it someone a relative that is going through something, or is it? Or you have to prepare for a big event because I know you have to prepare for a big event coming up. And those are good stress, right? Some of them are good stress, but they do um create some fatigue on a system but having that point of reference is very much like having an avatar you know you talk to like you you kind of instead of being vague and only grab the last information your doctor gave you you grab all the information and you try to organize them and see inside oh you know what he mentioned sleep you mentioned movement instead of exercise my PT agree. I like when people bounce back idea I share with their medical team because it's a it's a teamwork, mm -hmm. and the teamwork, the PT might not have thought about sharing that to you, but it doesn't mean um, they didn't know it. So when you have that confirmation, it really feels good for you. It's like, oh wow, okay, I got different people from different angle that provided me a new solution, and it works. And it's kind of like really uh, nice when all things kind of click together. In marketing, I guess um, there are things like that too. When the message, the avatar kind of mesh on in all together, it clicks, right? Uh, for in, in health is when you keep exploring to see who you want in your health net. Like in your group of health, uh, some people have a trainer, some people have a doctor, a PT, a massage therapist, an acupuncturist, a chiropractor. Like there's a there's a long list. It could be a lot. And yeah. sometimes people are just like, you know what? I got those four people, and that's perfect for me. Some some they're like, you know, I got one, and I bounce out of three others sometimes once a year, and that works for me. And it's very much like that also for for you in health. I want you to kind of plan your ear you uh, that one year ahead and think like who is your team what do you need to work on and uh, ask question from one team to the next to see if they have other ideas that the other one didn't think about sharing but might know or ideas that um they didn't know and they could think like oh you know what it might help my other client i have some client to share things with me i was like well that's great actually i i, I can share that information with someone else because i didn't know so it comes down in marketing to that communication, that um, getting to yeah. know who you talk to, I, you can talk better about that than me. Well, and I think one step further, I agree with that, is there's a feedback loop, right? Mm. So when you're talking to someone, you're finding out, okay, Phil, how did that go? You know, I gave you those Tai Chi videos. How'd that go for you? And you're getting some feedback from me. Um, on, oh, well, that worked really well, except I just, I can't do it that fast. Like, there's no way I can do that. And maybe I can't raise my arms so much over my shoulders. So I need to modify it. That's giving you feedback. And I think the same thing happens in marketing. You're getting feedback from your customers of this product really worked, or you've got data that's coming back saying, you know, people really resonated when I talked about, um, this, this, and this, but they really didn't resonate because they're not watching it very long when I talked about that. And so, you know, I think feedback is a super important thing along the way, whether it's our bodies telling us, okay, when I, when I do that exercise, it, it creates pain. When I do this one though, it makes me feel better, even though it's counterintuitive. And that's feedback I need to remember the next time I'm in pain because, you know, 
I don't want to be stuck on the couch in pain where I can't move. So I need to remember that actually, you know what, Phil, walking made a difference. Okay. That's feedback I need to remember. And I need a team of people to help me with. Well, I think the same thing is happening with your customers. They're giving you feedback that you need to remember and pay attention to. And that's ultimately all data is. It's feedback available to you in large quantities sometimes where you can see trend lines that a large group of people, ideally that are the same kind of person as your ideal customer, are giving you feedback on different things that you know how to pay attention to you know, what they're, what they're saying. I love that. Yeah. Uh, it, it resonates a lot with my field and, uh, it actually, it's, it's interesting because it really helps me like the, um, like if I can see that some of the concepts I'm using in my field can be useful in the way I market the, the services I have out, outside, it makes it less mechanistic, uh, me- mechanic. It makes it more human. And I'm all about that. So I really appreciate, I really appreciate that um, yeah. pointer from you, like the, the feedback. I think from there, what I'd like to is kind of for us to see if we can bring a, um, a central point to close and to get each other a point that will help us with the next few steps. So I'm going to start because I know from working with you and you working with the professional you work with, that you have a good amount of information now on what to work on. You know that um, you have some health priorities that are high and you know that you want to address them, which is actually very good, right? So you have everything going on. It's stressful, but if you step back, you know you have the problem and you have some solutions. So I'd like to recommend something very practical. It's something tangible. Whenever you want to create a change, a lifestyle change, and lifestyle change is one of the most powerful health thing you can do. You need, uh, or you can think about it like that. It is beneficial to have something called a trigger. Uh, in creating new habits, some people consider a trigger a material thing, like something physical. And sometimes it could be just a post-it with uh, an information on it that tells you, okay, I'm going to write down those three things I want to work on. And uh, I'm going to write them down and put them where I see them. So these every time I come here, I'm going to have my things to do. But I know every day, even if it's for like for your friend taking one deep breath, it's written on the sticker. It's like, okay, when I'm really anxious, I'm going to take three deep breaths. And maybe uh, the pointer number two for her would be like, I'm going to work on strategies to overcome that problem, to dissociate yourself a little bit. Um, That's what I will have her do um, to kind of, if you start to be uh, more rational for her, you get a little bit more space with your emotion and it's not a bad thing sometimes but for you what would be a physical thing that you can have and that can remind you visibly physically that's what you're working on knowing that we talked about movement we talked about rest and breath breath is pretty good for everybody <laughs> deep breath pretty yeah, good yeah, for yeah. everybody and you can always update that list. So I want you to keep that one thing, simplify it to one, right? A trigger, something physical that you're going to create so that you see it. It reminds you of your task daily. Now, I like that. I like that making it a lot more simple, but being driven by the goal of a year from now, I want to see those numbers reversed the opposite way. You know, if I went up by nine, down by nine. I want to see that go the other way the next year. So, and I do have another meeting here shortly. So I'm going to, I'm going to make my point very succinctly for you. So something I know you're really good at Philippe is when you meet with someone in your office or wherever you go, you're good at paying attention to what they're saying, both verbally and non-verbally. Like you're You can put your hands on someone's body and their body is telling you something that may or may not match with what their words are saying, but you're very in tune with what people are saying. So when it comes to your marketing, I think that same sensibility that you have is what you need to bring to how to pay attention to what your customers 
need. So now you're taking it from someone who's in your office, in your lab, you know, getting ready for you to work with them on their specific issue. Now you need to pay attention to what people are saying they need and how they need what you have to offer more collectively. So again, knowing what questions to ask, I think, you know, I think your your issue with marketing might be you're concerned about pushing yourself on people. Um, that's I, I know that resonates for me as a marketer. I don't like pushing myself, but if instead you can say, you know what, I want to help people. Mm. I know you love helping people. So if you can figure out how to ask questions the same way you do, if I came into your office and you put me down on your mat and you started touching me and say, oh, Phil, we got to work on this, this, and this. Can you can you start asking questions of customers in a way that's more collectively and have that same sensibility where you're paying attention to what they're saying, both with their words and with their actions and start paying attention and look at the collective answers that they're giving you. That's going to give you some guidance on, you know, you've got like five things I think you told me that you want to do in your business. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of businesses, but if you start paying attention to what people are telling you, it's going to tell you where to start, where to put your primary energy and how to talk about it so that what they're telling you resonates with what you say. Time when it comes to saying, hey, and this is what I charge for that, it's going to be way less awkward because they already want it. They just want to know, can I afford it? Or you know, just tell me how to pay because I need this and I, I'll, I'll find the money because I have to have it, whatever that case might be. That would be my challenge to you is get in touch with the way you already know how to ask questions, get to know your customers because you do it. You're actually really good at it. You yeah. just don't know how to do it for marketing. And, but I don't think it's, it's you're, you may be making that too hard because marketing doesn't have to be hard. I love that. Thank you so much. That's a good challenge. It's accepted. <laughs> All right. Well, I accept yours. So thanks for uh, this time. Absolutely. And I'll talk to you very soon. All right. I know you got to go. I do. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll uh, send you this in a little bit. Uh, loving talking with you, man.